We're in module 10 now about random samples and populations. This is 10.1a. We're going to discuss random and non-random sampling. So you can completely understand this lesson. Let's start with some definitions. Population. That's the entire group of objects or individuals considered for a survey. When information is being gathered about a group, the entire group of objects, individuals, or events is called the population. A sample, that's a part of the population that is chosen to represent the entire group. The population of a middle school includes 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students. A representative sample of the student population should include random students from each grade. Only choosing students from 8th grade will not be representative of all the students in the school. Take a look at this diagram. We've got five numbers coming across and five numbers coming down. A vegetable garden has 25 green pepper plants arranged in a five by five array. So each of these cells, each of these squares is one pepper plant. And a number in a given cell tells how many green peppers are on that plant. And the gardener decides to find the average number of green peppers on the plants based on a randomly chosen sample, because counting the number of green peppers on all of the plants is too time consuming. So the total number of all the green peppers is the population of green peppers. To simulate a random selection, we can use a spinner with numbers one through five, number cubes, or numbers in a bowl, or in a paper bag. The first number we get, the first number we pick, can represent the row. And the second number we get, we pick, can represent the column. Since I didn't have a spinner handy or some number cubes, I decided to write numbers 1 through 5 on pieces of paper and place them in a bag. After choosing a paper, we put it back into the bag and we record the amount of each cell chosen. So I pick one number. So let's say the first number I picked was a 3, and the second number I picked was a 5. 3 and 5 meet at this cell that has a 12 in it. That is the number I'm going to record, 12. To truly be random, we don't count a cell more than once. If you end up with the same cell, just pick again. So out of the bag, I picked a 5 and a 4, 5 and the 4, that got me a 13. I picked a 2 and a 5, that got me a 9. I picked a 4 and a 1, that got me another 9. I picked a 1 and a 3, that got me another 9. And I picked a 3 and a 4, that got me a 10. Now, we find the average number of green peppers on five randomly selected plants. So these are my five randomly selected plants. I take these numbers, I recorded them, I add them, I get 50, and the average is found by adding the cell numbers and dividing the sum by the amount of add-ins. So I added them up and I got 50, and there's one, two, three, four, five add-ins. So I'm going to divide this 50 by the number of add-ins, five, and I got 10 for the average. The five random numbers are the sample of this whole population. So this was part A, and we found the average was 10 from our five randomly selected plants. For part B, we can find the average number of green peppers on the plants by using the cells in the first row. We add 8 plus 11 plus 9 plus 8 plus 10, which is equal to 46. We need to find the average. We have five add-ins. We divide 46 by 5 and get 9 and 2 tenths. The average is 9 and 2 tenths. For part C, we can find the average of 10 randomly selected plants. So we stick our hand in the bag. We pick one number for the row and the other number for the column. And I ended up with these 10 numbers as my sample of the population. 
I added them up and got 104. There's 10 add-ins, so I divided 104 by 10, and I got 10 and 4 tenths. That means the average is 10 and 4 tenths for 10 randomly selected plants. Now in part A when we did it with 5 randomly selected plants, we got 10 for an average. When we chose the first row only as our random numbers, we got 9 and 2 tenths. When we did 10 randomly selected plants, we got 10 and 4 tenths. A representative sample has the same characteristics as the population. By choosing random cell numbers from the bag, any plant could have been chosen in parts A and C. This makes these numbers more representative of the entire population. A sample is more representative of an entire population if it includes more data from the population, and 10 numbers is more representative than 5 numbers. If we add all 25 numbers in the cells, the sum is 267. There's 25 add-ins, we had 25 numbers, and 267 divided by 25 is 10 and 68 hundredths. That's the actual average. Well, in part A, our average was 10. In part B, when we only did that first row, our average was 9 and 2 tenths. And in part C, when we had 10 random sampling plants, our average was 10 and 4 tenths. Well, parts A and C were closer to the actual average. 10 and 10 and 4 tenths is closer to this actual average than part B, because our samples were more random than picking every number in a row that had fewer peppers than the other rows. Part B numbers were not random. We just chose a row. That's not random. So we had random, the part A and part C numbers, and non-random, the part B numbers. Okay, we're finished with the first part of 10.1, we're going to move on to 10.1b, random samples and biased samples. So remember, the population is the entire group of objects or individuals considered for a survey, and the sample is a part of that population that is chosen to represent the entire group. Have a great day, and join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye!